Hello. Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. Apologies for being late. Uh, my computer hated me. <laughs> Okay, so I started up my computer this morning. Also, hi, Phil. <laughs> I started up my computer this morning and, you know, did the usual thing where I, like, I restart it before stream in order to free up any memory that's being, like, taken up by, by tasks that aren't actually running at the moment or whatever, you know. Just free up the RAM or whatever, however that works. I don't know. <laughs> but then for some reason, when it came back up, when I restarted it, the fucking monitors just didn't work. Trying to unplug them, plug them back in. PC just didn't want to output to them. So I had to like force shut it down, turn it back on. So okay, now, now we're back. Let's start it up. Uh, I start the stream and as I'm writing up my, uh, my going live tweet, I see that I've started dropping frames and I'm like, okay. Okay, let's, let's end it there, uh, restart my router, and we'll take it from there. I restart my router, and now my computer doesn't want to connect to the internet. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let's restart my computer again. <laughs> now we're here. <laughs> I would have been almost on time had it not been for all that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, today uh, we're going to be playing Ace Attorney. Um, so the great Ace Attorney, not not great. It the the Apollo Justice HD collection released recently ish, and also I saw that one heckin' someone made like an Ace. A someone's making rather. It hasn't been released yet. Someone's making like an Ace Attorney case maker. Um, so I've been in, and I like found that because my. My, my YouTube suggestions had been filled with Ace Attorney, so I've been in a bit of an Ace Attorney mood. <laughs> but like, I, I couldn't... Case make it sound so cool, right? I, I, when it comes out, I'm probably gonna do like a stream messing around with it just to learn how it works and whatnot. Apparently, they're like, yeah, it, at, at launch, it's probably gonna have the, like the ability to do like custom evidence, custom... Uh, like backgrounds and whatnot, but probably won't have custom characters. Meanwhile, my mind immediately went, hmm, what can I do with custom characters? Because <laughs> I just sort of, sort of started brainstorming like a potential Ace Attorney case using some of my friends as the characters. I would not be the, I, I would not be the, the protagonist, by the way. I would make the... <laughs> I would make Yuri the protagonist. I would be the prosecutor. <laughs> make me the killer? Uh, I, I don't know who the killer is. However, <laughs> funny story. The, the heckin... The case as I was dreaming it up in my head. Hello, Kana. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> the case as I was dreaming it up in my head, uh, feel. Um... It, it would revolve around uh, a quote-unquote murder at <laughs> at an independent TV station called Theo TV, <laughs> and the victim would be uh, an android idol who was supposedly built by Theo TV's owner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the I didn't want to use any of my any of my friends as the victim, so I'm like, hey, what if I use Theo's old model as the victim? <laughs> and then there'd be like some <laughs> the victim is Miko. No, I couldn't think of a good role for Miko, so I'm just like, you know what? I don't have the detective yet. Let's make Miko the detective. And then there'd be some funny scene where Yuri meets Miko for the first time and immediately mistakes him as a cat. <laughs> I was thinking like, like, uh, heckin, the, the, the non-robot Theo claims to be the one who made Theo, the, the, the robot Theo, and like, the contradiction there would be like, uh, it's like, if, if you're supposedly capable of making this, this super advanced humanoid android, why is your phone so old? <laughs> 
And then it come out that, oh, it's, it's all a sham and someone else actually made the android. <laughs> I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> but yeah. Fun times. I don't know if I'm actually going to end up making it because it feels like a lot of work to put in for a, a fan work when I could be working on original stuff. Speaking of which, I've been, I've been messing around with RPG Maker. <laughs> But I don't know. I'll, I'm, I'm keeping it in mind. Potentially, it could be something I make at some point. <laughs> anyway, we've been rambling about things that aren't happening. We're playing Ace Attorney. It's been a while. Uh, I think from what I remember l l l last time... Um, I, th I think we, we were in the trial section. We'd just gotten through a... Uh, We'd gotten through a testimony, and then all the jurors said, like, not guilty, we're, we've, we're, we're done, and so we gotta turn everyone's opinion around. Anyway, <laughs> enough rambling. Game time. Hi. <laughs> also, apologies for ignoring you, Kana. Uh, <laughs> I was in the middle of <laughs> rambling. <laughs> I'm doing good. I hope you're doing good as well. Let me just... Refresh that so that the audio is in sync. It tends to get a bit out of sync if I don't deactivate and reactivate it uh, when starting up um, OBS. Alright, let's continue. <laughs> the defense moves to an. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna full screen the game and hope hope that hope that OBS doesn't crash like it did last time I did that. <laughs> oh, I should have checked if there are any updates. <laughs> oh well. The defense invokes its right to a summation examination, my lord. OBS better not crash. <laughs> Blah. Oh, speaking of, I should I should drink my tea <laughs> before it goes cold. <laughs> Why am I not surprised at my learned Nipponese friend's inability to admit defeat? You chose to cling desperately to some archaic rule you barely comprehend instead of accepting the truth. Certainly no other defense counsel in recent times has exercised the right to a summation examination. Because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. Curious that this is coming, that they're saying this now, despite the fact that this case takes place in between case four and five of the first game, after which we have already successfully used the summation examination a few times. <laughs> Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. Hold on. Got the wrong window. There we go. Put that one on top. This court will proceed with a summation examination, as outlined in the Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Hold on, I need to wait for the, the music to start up again so I can check the audio levels. Are you and your fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we all know about... We know all about this young lad's tenacity. And we're ready for it. Very well. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of the crime for which he stands accused. You know, I haven't mentioned it yet but it, it it's interesting that they brought in like a jury system in uh in this game cuz in the in Apollo Justice they sort of like they were testing out a new jury jury system but then like the the director of the Ace Attorney series got pulled off to work on the the crossover game with Layton and so because the crossover game took so long they had to continue the the main series without him, and that 
the whole jury system just sort of got dropped from the main series. And so now it in, it ended up in this spin-off instead. Because that... After the main series got handed over to the B team, the A team ended up working on this spin-off instead. The victim may not be well off, but he's a nobleman. And straight up, there's no reason to doubt the man. I think maybe a little lower. That should be fine. Well, I do declare the good gentleman as no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just look at the accused by comparison. He's Japanese, stoops all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. <laughs> as a reminder, this game is set in like... many years ago. Uh, <laughs> these views are not acceptable in the modern day, but... Uh... <laughs> Some characters are just sort of like this, you know? <laughs> There's no evidence to suggest the gangling actor is a fraudsman. For now, at least. I really don't care, like. I just need this trial to end quickly. <laughs> Three hours of missing time is nothing when you reach my age, you know? Nothing at all. Okay, I don't see... No! Why are we dropping frames? Uh, the fuck is up with my internet today? Mm. After I did all that rambling too. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to restart my internet and restart OB. Oh, never mind, it's back. If it drops again, <laughs> if it drops again, then I might, th then I'll like restart my router again and restart OBS. But for now, it, it's it's back to being good, apparently. <sighs> Australian internet is great. <laughs> right, we'll we'll just we'll we'll continue on for now. Keep an eye on it. Um, and if it drops again, then I guess we'll, we'll try and fix things. I knew it. Every single one of them seems completely convinced. It would seem that all the jurors have come to the conclusion that Mr. Shamspear is a fine, upstanding, and honest citizen. If you ask me, they've all been bewitched by his strange theatrical movements. And sadly, nothing Mr. Natsume has said appears to have registered at all. Well, here goes. Let's not forget. I've pleaded with the jury on Soseki-san's behalf before, and it worked. So you never know. Before we begin, it might be an idea for me to remind you exactly how a summation examination works, Mr. Narihodo. Oh. Well, you're still very new to British law, after all. Even... No. Okay. It's dropping again. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna restart my router and restart OBS. Um, and then I'll be right back. It's it's coming up again. And... No, it's, it's gone again. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My thing looks like it's it's I mean I mean like it was on and off. So may maybe it's good, maybe it's not. <laughs> Who heckin' knows at this point? Oh, I need to refresh this so it recognizes that I'm live again. <laughs> anyway, I'm back. Hi. I restarted my router. I closed and opened OBS again. Hopefully it stays okay. I just want to play video games, man. <laughs> also, while I was uh while I was doing things to try and get things back up, I uh 
I noticed I, I made a typo in the stream title and I, I said you're a shame spear instead of you're a sham spear. So you know. Alright, let me just put everything back to where... Alright, I've got to do this again. Don't I? To sync the audio back up again. Okay, fingers crossed we don't get dropped frames again. My Twitch didn't refresh. <laughs> oh no. I know mobile, I know mobile Twitch doesn't do that. I don't, I've never seen it not do that for desktop Twitch. So, uh, I don't know, Twitch is just a little broken, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to this. That's true, I suppose, and so Saki-san's fate is entirely in my hands now, too. There's always a chance I might have forgotten some crucial detail since, you know, uh, like two days ago. <laughs> so, perhaps I should hear Sisata-san out. I wonder, should I let her talk me through it again or not bother? No need. I don't need a tutorial. Thank you for the kind offer, Miss Sisato. But I have been through plenty of these summation examinations already now. I think it's important that we don't delay the start any longer than necessary. Of course, I understand. And I'm sure you're quite right. If you're confused by anything at any point, you can turn to me for advice whenever you like. I'll be here for you. The key to this is really listening carefully to each juror's statement and finding two that are contradictory, and pitting the corresponding jurors against each other. So it, it's like testimony, it's like testimony, but instead of presenting evidence, we're like presenting different bits of testimony to each other, to show that they contradict each other. Which is a thing that's happened like outside of the summation examination in an earlier Ace Attorney game, but I think the way to do it then was just to press both statements, and it was a bit clunky. Here, like, the whole system's built around it. Jury examination! So for now, we'll just press everyone, because I didn't see any statements that are immediately contradictory. Well, there are plenty of people in London who seem noble, but poor. Couldn't some of them also be liars? <laughs> Bruh. I have no doubt about it. Like that shaky client of yours, for example. Absolutely not. Mr. Natsume is no liar. Look, the point is, the only thing that passed the victim's lips that night was that Japanese man's tea. When you take the gas man's testimony into account as well, the truth couldn't be any clearer. Uh, well... That's alarmingly logical. To be frank here, I'm a gentleman with with a gentleman's values. If it turns out that the old old Shakespearean chum is a rotten liar after all, I'll gladly change my decision about the defendant. Okay, so essentially we need to prove that Mr. Shamspear is a liar. And I'm sure my fellow gentlemen of the jury would do the same, isn't that right? Well, um, yes, perhaps. Though I don't- though I don't see it happening. Eh? What's that? Elderly gentle on the end here, you know. <laughs> You'll have to speak up. <laughs> well, I really don't care about all this nonsense, I just need this trial to be over. How many gentlemen do we actually have on the jury, then? <laughs> Alright, sir, I may hold you to that. Don't forget what you said. Hmm. Alright, if you can show me that the victim's a liar, I'll reconsider my position. He has no reason to lie, I think he's rather splendid. Are you saying you believe the man to be trustworthy because he's rather splendid? No, that's not what I said. The point is, the man is the victim here. What reason would he have to lie? And yes, he is rather splendid. <laughs> so you say it yet again. Meanwhile, the man who stands accused behaves so suspiciously, so suspiciously it's exhausting to look at him. 
I'm afraid he's not splendid at all. <laughs> splendid logic there, madame. <laughs> Thank you so much. Just look at the accused by... Yeah, he's Japanese. We get it, you're racist. No, no, no. Not one of these things is a reason to find the man guilty. But he is fishy, there's no point in dancing around the fact. He's Japanese, he has a moustache, and he stoops. You see, you arrive at the conclusion in just three steps. Three steps, like a waltz, in fact. You know, the more I think about it, the more this trial seems like a dance. You seem to be several steps ahead of yourself, though, and you're on the wrong foot. No, there's nothing but circumstantial evidence here. There's no proof of the, no actual proof of the defendant's guilt. But the victim's version of events is backed up by what the big chinned man says. N Hi. <laughs> I'm back. So, uh, after restarting my router, I guess my internet, my, my computer just was having trouble connecting to, the, to my Wi-Fi again. <laughs> So I, I heckin had to like disable my Wi-Fi uh, adapter or whatever, turn it back on, and then it was like, oh, okay, now I can connect to it. This game is cursed. This game is cursed. Remember, the, remember my first stream of this game? That was when my internet got cut off. <laughs> now I'm playing again, and we're having frame drops and disconnections and bruh. I just want to play some Ace Attorney, man. This is the only Ace Attorney game I haven't played or fully experienced. Never play this game again, but it's Ace Attorney, though. This isn't some random heck off, uh, hidden object game. This is Ace Attorney. Anyway. In case you missed it, uh, Naruhodo just asked, like, or oh, just asked, like, hey, what, what do you mean by fraudsman? And so, now she's explaining. <laughs> it really is most tires. it really is a most tiresome problem for the company, most irritating. We can be absolutely certain that a customer is stealing from us, but without hard evidence, we can't even threaten to take action for fear of being sued. I'm sorry, you've lost me. Is she the head of the gas company? Oh, and so like that that's why her design looks like that. She's like the queen bee and then the worker is like the the worker bee. I'm the wife of Augustus Alamont, the owner of the Alamont Gas Gas Company. Good gracious, Alamont Gas, you say? <laughs> Gas is the future of energy in this country, and around the globe, but proper handling is essential. As I'm sure our employee from the East End branch office would be the first to agree. Absolutely, Lady Quinby! <laughs> Gotta be used properly. Alamont Gas is the best in the world, of course. So Quinby, because she's the Queen Bee. <laughs> Ah, I think we may have solved the mystery of the bow from earlier, Mr. Naruhodo. <laughs> Hold on. What was his name again? Something Miedemann, but... Adron. Oh! Adron B. Miedemann, he's, like, he's a drone. He, he's, he's just the regular worker bee. I think they're called drones. And then she's Queen Bee, because she's the Queen Bee. We've solved the pun of Adron's name. <laughs> Let me pull that up again. There we go. Right, he bowed in deference to his employer's wife, did he? Ah, so would I be right in assuming 
that the reason Mr. Miedemann was watching Mr. Shamspear up in his room. I'm afraid there's no end to the lengths the population of, of the East End will go in order to steal our gas. So I really have no choice when the company identifies someone as a possible fraudsman. But to dispatch a worker to watch the suspect day and night... Oh, but to the... That, that, that's not a new sentence, oops. <laughs> We're very thorough in our investigations. So you mean Mr. Shamspear is... I wouldn't come out and say it in public. But you can finish that sentence with a grubby little gas thief. <laughs> you, have, you have noticed the public gallery in here, have, we, have you? The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Okay, thank, thanks, stream elements. <laughs> Faith, wouldst thou grant me with thy words, were I to let them penetrate the skin? But seraphs hear not insults, only choirs of angels in song. We may not have evidence yet, but my workers won't stop buzzing around until they find it. And when they do, you'll find yourself blasted back to your angelic heights in an Alamont gas explosion. <laughs> so Mr. Shamspear has been stealing gas. I wonder, during number four, if you wouldn't mind adding that information to your statement. Well, my pleasure. Was the bit about ripping that thief apart what you <laughs> you enjoyed? <laughs> a little before that part, a little before the part about abject violence. <laughs> if it's not too much trouble. Yes, of course. This could be it. This could shift the balance. Indeed. You can put on a fine performance, but in reality he's a common thief of my company's gas. So I'll... Do this one first. Show he's a liar. He's a thief! Objection. Those two statements clear... Oh. To whose statement was the... Did I get it wrong? To whose statements do you refer, Council? Uh, oh no, the music stopped, so I think that means I got it right. Juror number one. It just looked like a generic objection, so I figured I must have gotten it wrong. Eh, what are you yelling about, lad? <laughs> He's walking! I remember seeing a tweet of someone getting real hyped about this, like, holy shit, the, the, the dude's walking! Because normally characters aren't, you know, they don't animate and move around the space in Ace Attorney games. So this was like, holy shit. Holy shit, they're actually making use of the, the space and shit. The power of three dimensions, yeah. I, presu I presume you've heard Jura number four's statement, made by the wife of the owner of Alamont Gas. Well, yes. The victim, who you claim to be a noble, straight-up man, in fact turns out to be a common thief. <laughs> so the good lady says, but there's no evidence, is there? You and I both heard them say as much. It's true, we don't have evidence as such, just yet. But the claims aren't baseless, you know. What? <laughs> you heard me. Seeing as his operation has already been compromised, I would suggest that the court hears testimony from our East End branch office employee over there. I'll do whatever you say, my lady. Gas man's honor. <laughs> I'm still thinking that, like, there's no... There's no actual poison, and maybe he wasn't even a thief, maybe he just has a fucking gas leak. <laughs> and that's what almost killed him. Jura number one, you say you're a man of your word. If I, if I could show that Mr. Shamspear was a liar, you assured me that you would reconsider your decision about the defendant's guilt. Hmm, yes, I did say that. As a man of honor, I'll hold to it. And I'm sure the other gentlemen of the jury will. Me? The, oh, well, yes. Now that we've found out the man's a liar, perhaps we ought to consider the matter further. 
Well, if I'm perfectly honest, I haven't heard half of what you've all been saying. <laughs> so this means you'll recap a few points. So if this means you'll recap a few points, that would suit me to happen down to the ground. Oh no, I'm not having any part of this. I want this trial over and done with. In that case, I shall change my leaning. So, Mr. William Shamspear, if that is your real name. <laughs> we of the jury demand to know exactly what kind of man you really are. Yeah! <laughs> That's four jurors. Four not guilty. Four... F oh. I was thinking, like, how, why did it go so fast? But, like, this is the first summation examination of the game, so it's probably just sort of tutorial-ish. It's a quick one. Yes, Mr. Naruhodo, victory! Order! Order! Why do they spell it like that? Well, wow, this, this is quite extraordinary, I must say. As a result of the defense's su summation examination, the jury's leaning has changed. Now only two jurors say guilty, while four say not guilty. Therefore, I declare this court to be in a state of disaccord. And order the trial to continue. You have spoiled the bouquet, Mr. Shamspear. <laughs> the ladies and gentlemen of the jury now find they are unable to trust you, the victim. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. So God mend me, I do swear. This gas man speaketh that which concerns him most, naught but gas, naught but thin air. Eh, it burneth bright awhile, but it hath no substance, and it doth reek foul. Oi, what did you say? Do I take it, Mr. Shamspear, that you deny the allegations of gas thievery? Most heartily, my lord, hast thou forgot I am as a seraph? An angel, noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily, honest of heart. Ah, you flowery mouth, pompous bean pole. Just because I haven't got the evidence yet. Mr. Shamspear, if in fact you are not noble of mind, sweet of nature, or honest of heart, if you are a liar, then your testimony should not have no sway in this courtroom. <laughs> it is my considered opinion that at the present time, no other possible culprit of this crime has been identified. All testimony heard by the court thus far heavily implicates the defendant. In short, it would not be unreasonable at this stage for me to rule on the case. Oh no. However, in light of the fact that the jury has expressed concern about the fidelity of this witness, I believe it would be inappropriate for this court to not pursue the point further. Objection. I assure you, my lord, that would be a waste of the court's time. The gas and this case are unrelated. Juror number four. Yes? Didn't you say before that although you had no hard evidence to prove this man had, has been stealing gas, you have strong grounds for suspecting him? That's right, we do. Don't we, hmm, worker? Absolutely, Ma Lady Quinby. Gasman's honor. <laughs> Very well then, we will hear your testimony now. You will tell the court precisely why you believe the victim, Mr. William Shamspear, has been stealing gas. Yes, my lord, it'll be my pleasure. On the element gas name, I... If I may, my lord. Go ahead, madame. 
This worker's testimony may have a significant bearing on the, on the good name of my husband's company. Therefore, I should like to take the stand alongside him in a supervisory role, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, is this where we're finally going to get reactions introduced? Because we're on the second case and we still haven't got that yet. Woohoo! Yeah, sweet as honey! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> okay. Very well. As an exception, I... I shall honour your request. Thank you, my lord. You wait till the boss gives you an earful, oh it's gonna sting, mark my words. All this bee theming. So you will both testify before the court on the subject of the illegal consumption of the Alamont Gas Company's fuel. Oh, oh no, Altamont, not Alamont. I wonder if Altamont is a word related to bees as well. Yes. Is that clear, my good man? Clear as Altamont gas, my lady. Which is the clearest in the world. <laughs> Do you think the gas has gone to his head, Miss Susato? <laughs> I think the man is just a very dedicated employee, Mr. Narihoto. <laughs> Here we go. Testimony time. <laughs> I'm proud to be the company's East End branch investigator and meter money co collection agent. Altamont gas meters accept thruppany bits. Each coin giving customers about two hours of gorgeous gas. And yet, the meter in Mr. Shamspear's room didn't have a single coin in it. The meter doesn't appear to have been tampered with, though and the collection agent, agent has the only key. Somehow he's using all the flame and gas he wants without paying a penny. If that's not thieving, what is? I, I still reckon he's not using any, it's just a fucking gas leak. Pray forgive the discourtesy. The irrelevance of this testimony has co t caused me to turn to my hallowed chalice. What do you mean by that remark, Lord Van Zeeks? Did the mustachio Nipponese poison the gangling excuse for an actor, or didn't he? That is all that should concern this court, and yet now he must listen to this abhorrence. That is some very flammable wine. Or I guess alcohol is flammable, so... Maybe his wine just has a very high alcohol content. Clearly what separates the vast British Empire and your eastern island nation is more than geographical distance. But but this could turn out to be crucial a crucial testimony. The cross-examination must go ahead. <laughs> Just tosses it into the crowd. Do what you will. Lord Van Zeeks appears to be in a violent mood. <laughs> He just showered the gallery with glass. <laughs> yes, he does. An attempted poisoning and an incidence of gas theft with no supporting evidence. It's true that they would appear completely unrelated at first glance, but I wonder. The truth tends to be buried in the most unusual places. I still say it's a gas leak. <laughs> the first step in uncovering it will be establishing just who and what this man really is. Cross-examination! This, this probably gives us nothing, but I'm gonna press it anyway. So does that mean you enter people's houses in order to empty their gas meters? That I do! Have to try and catch people when they're in, then I ask permission to come inside and do my business. Does that mean you've been into Mr. Natsume's room before, as well as that of Mr. Shamspear? Well now, interesting you should bring that up, because I couldn't believe how little money was in his meter. <laughs> I mean, how the pair of them survive in the winter is beyond me, it really is. 
Knowing Mr. Natsume, he probably spends all his gas money on books. And then when he's finished reading them, he probably burns them for water. You will kindly reiterate your statement about the gas meters themselves, Mr. Biederman. Not much to say, really, but as you wish. Altamont gas meters accept thruppany bits, which I assume you, you put three pennies in, I assume is what he's saying. <laughs> Gotta pause what this means. <laughs> I don't know currency besides dollars and cents. Australia doesn't use pennies. Each coin given customers about two hours of gorgeous gas. So all London houses that have gas supply are fitted with these gas meters, are they? They're the latest model, the height of technology, developed by our company, Altamont Gas. And anyone who uses our gas will have one of these meters in their property, yes? So a, th a three pence coin gives about two hours of gas. Most people... Oh, so if a three pence coin gives about two hours of gas, most people would use about three coins in a night. Bit more than that, usually. If they have both gas lights and a gas stove, that is. Thinking about it, Soseki-san doesn't have a fireplace in his room, does he? Some people still choose to use candles, of course, and only have gas for heating. Ah yes, I do remember seeing candles in Mr. Natsume's room, actually. How, and how does the money in the meter get back to you at, your gas com at the gas company? Every three days, gasmen like me visit the properties on the gas supply and empty the meters of coins. I must say, the design and manufacturer of the new of the new meter cost the company an awful lot of money. But happily, it did put a stop to people not paying their dues, for the most part. Ah, because they have to pay in advance, you mean? <laughs> yes, exactly right. And yet the meter in Mr. Shamspear's room did not have a single coin in it. Out of interest, how long has this been going on? Weeks and weeks! He's been pinching gas off, uh, off us for ages. Okay, so maybe it's not just a gas leak. Because if it was just a gas leak, he'd, be, he'd have been dead weeks ago. <laughs> and you've examined the meter in Mr. Shamspear's room, I take it? Naturally, we took it off the wall and went over it with a fine-toothed comb. And found nothing suspicious at all, I presume? No, I'm afraid we didn't. Which is exactly why I demanded a new type of meter to be produced. One with an indestructible lock. The Sham Spear Special! <laughs> that sounds like it would have cost an awful lot of three penny pieces. But even after that, the rascal's meter was still empty. I'll never forgive the humiliation when I opened up the money box and found a bear. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I said. <laughs> you what? <laughs> and the look on his face, that smarmy smile of his. What if he just has a freaking coin on a string and he just like puts it in and then takes it out with the string? <laughs> Ha! <laughs> I pulled the meter straight off the wall and took it back to the office. And you know what? Nothing. Not a trace of being jammied open anywhere. Not a single sign. And what's happening to my, to my salary as a result? Down to three shillings a day, that's what. A life-threatening situation in a number of ways. <laughs> Incidentally, what became of that meter? Nothing became of it, I've still got it. Oh? Oh ho! New evidence to investigate. Right here. No wonder they call you Meterman. <laughs> I think it would be prudent for the court to sequester this item while the trial is ongoing. Da da da! Definitely. Time to investigate! <laughs> It's a very sturdy padlock, isn't it? And the money box is sealed with beeswax, too. 
Oh, so it's like an anti-tampa seal. If if the if the the beeswax seal is broken, you know someone's opened it up. So if Mr. Sholmes were to get up into any mischief, he'd been he'd be found out immediately. Mr. Naruhodo, mischief of that kind is not the sort of thing that Mr. Sholmes would. <laughs> you know you didn't finish that sentence. <laughs> you know you'd. Oh, you know you didn't finish that sentence, don't you? <laughs> well, anyway. It's understandable that the gas company would want to safeguard the money that's rightfully theirs. But it does feel a little over the top, perhaps, doesn't it? Alright, what else do we have here? Oh no, that's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, what else do we have? Oh, these are probably the pipes that the gas goes through. Oh ho! So much for not finding any evidence of it being tampered with. Oh, what's? Have you spotted something, Mr. Nanohodo? Just here, there's a little hole. Do you see? Goodness, you're right. I wouldn't have noticed. It's not a very neat hole, is it? Not professionally made, I'd say. So you think it might have been opened up by Mr. Shamespeare? Possibly. It seems people at the Altamont Gas Company must have missed it. Oh, they, they're probably like, oh, it's not small. It, it's too small to get coins out of. But he was probably like sticking something up there and then like triggering the mechanism from the inside. <laughs> Rather than putting a coin in and taking the coin out. That, that's my guess. It certainly seems to go all the way through the, to the inside. Yes, but there's no way for a coin to fit. A coin could fit through here. That's true, but even so, it seems more than a little suspicious. Da da, -da. Okay, cool beans. That's... We know what we gotta do. Although at first glance, there doesn't appear to be anything unusual about it. Let's move this along, shall we? Continue with your testimony. Though I would say it has as much value as the contents of that needle. Oof. <laughs> Insert Roblox oof here. The meter doesn't appear to have been tampered with. You sure about that? Ma'am? I didn't press the other statements, but I didn't need to, so, you know. <laughs> Lady Altamont, I'm afraid to say that this meter clearly does show signs of, be of having been tampered with. What? Get away! <laughs> I've been over and over that thing. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with it. In that case, what do you have to say about the small hole that's been made at the base of the coin box? Hole? What? You're right. You're quite right. There is a little hole there. The meters aren't supposed to have that. None of the others do. In other words, we can assume that Mr. Shamspear secretly opened up this hole himself. Yes, I wouldn't be at all surprised. But why? Yeah, why? I mean, it's tiny. You can't get... You can't get a farthing through that. Oh, you couldn't. Lady Altamont, I wonder if you could give the court some more details about your meter design. What sort of details? What I'd specifically like to know is how it differentiates coins. How does the meter tell the difference between different coins? What do you mean? Well, for example, if someone were to put a one penny coin, that wouldn't work, presumably, would it? No, of course not. So, well, how does the meter know what kind, what the coin it's been fed is a thropany bit? I know that, not what. Ah, I see what you're getting at now. The meter tells coins apart by their shape and size, which includes their thickness. A thropany bit is about three quarters of an inch in diameter, you see. Other co the other coins just won't fit. I see. 
It's clearly been very well thought out. The witness will amend her formal testimony with that information, in case it is pertinent. As you wish, my lord. Oh, we're going back to the testimony. The meter is designed for coins with the exact diameter, diameter and thickness of a thruppity bit. Nothing else will fit. But conversely then, it would seem that anything matching a three pence coin, exactly in terms of diameter and thickness, would equally well be used. Um, would that be true? Well, yes, in a way. The weight comes into it a certain extent as well. We've thought all that... We've, we've thought of all... We've thought of all that though. If I find any fake coins inside a coin box when I empty the meter, the contract says the customer has to pay 100 times the amount they diddled as a fine. We live for moments like that, us gas men do live for them. <laughs> My man loves his job. Hmm, it would seem the gas company has thought of everything. Wahoo! Hurrah for gas, hurrah for cash, Altamont all the way. That's quite enough of that. <laughs> Remind me, how big are thruppity bits? About three quarters of an inch across. What do you think, Mr. Nanohodo? Is this two centimeters measurement significant? A book. A piece of an envelope, bar of soap. Could it be? Two centimeters across. Three quarters of an inch. <laughs> Do you think? We did find this soap at the scene, didn't we? Yes. Yes, there were two bars on that little ledge just outside the window, so we took this one. But I'm sure that when we first found it, there was some sort of reddish medallion in the middle there. He's, he's, he's making wax coins and then melting them so that they come out the bottom of the thing. Genius! There's no sign of it now. Where could it have gone? Let's go. The power of deduction. Or perhaps there's some other aspect of the meter's construction we should be focusing on. Yes, you may be right. Perhaps I should try a different tack here. Like asking about whether the meter can be dismantled, for example. No, 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 no. Leave it. Let us return to the testimony. Of course, my lord. As I was saying, Altamont meters are unsurpassed. They can't be manipulated. <laughs> That's what you think. Am I always using all the flaming gas he wants without paying a penny? <laughs> Nothing else will fit. Well, how about this? Let me just confirm something here. If the diameter and thickness were to be correct, the meter would accept any object as if it were a thruppenny bit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Well, by something of a coincidence, while we were investigating Mr. Shamspear's room, we found a particular item that matches the dimensions perfectly. Something the same size as a thruppenny bit? What was it? The item in question is this! What? Have you been inhaling gas? That's a bar of soap! It certainly looks nothing like a thruppenny bit, I must say. Looks like I'm gonna have to point out exactly what I mean here. Bruh, they're really making me do this. There's one po There's one point of interest here. Got it. You have to turn over the soap to see what I mean. Why didn't you just present it with the, the important part face up? Bruh. Ah. Are you referring to that round depression in the middle of the soap there? That's right. A depression that's approximately three quarters of an inch in diameter. Or in other words, almost exactly the same size as a thruppenny bit. Get away! Does anyone here have... 
Does anyone here present have in their possession a thruppity bit? Quickly now, hand over your coins, ladies and gentlemen. Sounds rather like a highway robbery, doesn't it? Thanks to a kind member of the public in the gallery, I have here a thruppity bit. Now to see if it fits. My word, it couldn't be more snug! Yes, as I suspected. This, without a doubt, is a vital clue to explain how the Altamont Gas Company is being defrauded. Well, I don't believe it. Oh man, even her heckin... Even her dress has the, the, the bee stripes and she has like a thing around her waist to make it look like the wings. So your, your assertion amounts to what? That, that some kind of inferior bar of soap has a tentative connection to the theft of gas? Yes. The depression in the soap was clearly made by a thruppany bit. I must concur, at least, that pushing a coin with some force into, poor quality, into a poor quality bar of soap such as this is a remarkably simple way of replicating the coin's shape. Then you could use, well, some melted wax or something to pour into the mold. You could make fake coins in no time! And then by melting the wax, you just get it out. <laughs> out of that small hole. This brings all the pieces of the puzzle together. It's the method Mr. Shamsby has been using to steal gas. That's the missing link. And now, if I follow the chain of thought, it's going to bring me a new explanation for what happened that nobody's considered yet. But this is all nonsense. If the man had been making fake coins, my worker would have found them when he emptied the meter. Quite true, Lady Altamont. In the disappearance of some... In, in the absence of some black magic that could make them disappear. I see. That's what we're dealing with, is it? There is one form of black magic that could cause the fake coins to disappear into thin air, yes. Exactly. And the meter here, here gives it away. What on earth? There are remnants of the magical method you used uh, visible on the gas meter taken from the victim's room. That is your assertion, counsel. The defense will identify these remnants for the court at once. Where on the meter can remnants of the methods used to make the fake coins disappear be seen? Oh, I don't know, maybe it's the fucking hole in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we found this bar of soap at the scene of the crime, just outside the victim's window. Outside? Yes, outside, where you yourself, Mr. Meaderman, were lawyering in the freezing winter air. That's where we found this soap. Ah, I get it. That's right, the answer, of course, is ice. Did you say ice? Mr. Shamspear has been leaving soaps like this outside his window each evening filled with water. After a night outside in the bitter cold, the water is completely frozen solid the next morning. He then takes his fake coins of ice and feeds them into the gas meter, giving him light and warmth in spades and his room becomes very comfortably warm. Uh, as his room becomes very comfortably warm, the ice, now inside the meter's coin box, melts, turning back into water and draining harmlessly away through the small hole made in the underside of the meter. That is how, without leaving any evidence of his wrongdoing, this man has been stealing Altamont gas. And now Von Zeeks is gonna be like, and how does this relate to the fucking murderer? Just, just like that, so simply. Is is he trying to make us look like idiots? He's been fooling us all with some bars of soap and some water. That's right, madame. I don't believe it. It can't be true. Do you have any idea how much money we spent to develop that new meter? And now you have the audacity to suggest that a bit of soap and some water can render it totally useless? I'm fairly sure I didn't design it. <laughs> Evidence. Sorry? 
I want evidence. If you're going to stand here and tell us our meters are rubbish, I want, want to see some proof. She's very good at enforcing accountability, isn't she? Very well, Lady Al Altamont. If you'd like evidence, I'll, provi I'll provide it. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what evidence. What? <laughs> Mr. Nanuhono, uh, are you saying you actually do have evidence to support this theory? I did notice a trace of something that bothered me a little at the time. Let me look through the court record before he gets to that. Levi street map, torn off envelope, bar of soap, pair of teacups, crime scene photograph. There's no tea ring inside Mr. Natsume's cup. Ah, thank you for the reminders, Fio. some reason they came up on my stream manager and on OBS, but not on my phone. So that's a thing. Did he maybe like use the tea? Is that what they're saying? Because I was thinking like maybe the red, the, the red dot was actually the tea, but. And I have a feeling that this theory we've come up with now could explain it. The piece of evidence that substantiates the theory about how Mr. Shamspear has been stealing gas. Take that. Teacups. You intend to use this evidence to convince the court of Mr. Shamspear's scheme, counsel? Um, yes. That, oh, okay. Never mind. Mr. Nanohoda, your eyes are darting around like little fish. Little fish, otherwise known as small fry. And small fry, I find, are quickly polished off. Okay, never mind. Have I just been devoured by the prosecution? If Mr. Shamsmere made coins out of ice, wouldn't there perhaps be some trace of that at the scene? In his room, I mean. At the scene, yes, that's true. Let me have another look through the court record. So, some trace of ice. Oh! I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> It's right there. It's right there. There's a giant fucking puddle underneath his his gas meter. I was thinking too hard. Take that. This is a photograph of the scene at the point where the victim was discovered, taken by Inspector Gregson. And it clearly shows the remnants of the crime carried out by Mr. Shamspear. What remnants? Here you can see the gas meter on the wall in Mr. Shamspear's room. Now look closely at the floorboards directly underneath the meter. What is that? Some kind of grubby stain? Almost certainly it's a water stain resulting from the liquid that drained out of the hole made in the meter. Ah! If one coin gives about two hours of gas usage and the occupant was heating his room in all his waking hours, we can imagine he would have used around ten of his fake coins each day. The melting ice on inside the meter's coin box would have been dripping out almost constantly, leaving a stain on the floor. This, this is awful. And there's further evidence too. There is. Mr. Shamspear slumped at his table, apparently having consumed stric strychnine. And right here next to him is a bar of soap broken in half. You're right. It would appear to me then, counsel, that the man was eating the soap, was he? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me for disagreeing with your lordship, but certainly not. He didn't beat about the bush there, did he? In truth, Mr. Shamspear was found with a fork in his hand. A meal of soap is sounding increasingly likely, Lord Man Seeks. Do you mean to say he was using that fork to... Yes. 
to extract a frozen coin from the bar of soap. Ah, but the bar broke in half. So perhaps it didn't go very well. Good gracious. That man is just showering the gallery with glass. Lord Fanzeeks. I was throwing my hand up in despair and happened to catch my hallowed bottle on the way. Pray forgive my maladroit mistake. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly. What is the meaning of this council? Allow me to pose my learned friend a question. What exactly did you establish with your most recent cross-examination? Um, well... Then Mr. William Shamspear is a liar and a thief. In other words, that his testimony is unreliable. That's it. That's exactly it. Very well. Let us assume this man is a liar. Now allow me to pose another question. What possible difference does that make? Well... We know that suicide can be discounted. Scotland Yard's investigation revealed no no sign of another vessel that contained poison. And on the night in question, there were no visitors to the room except the accused. The young gasman's testimony, which we have no reason to doubt, has confirmed that. Furthermore, the only possible way the poison could have entered the victim's body is via the tea. The court has seen no evidence that suggests otherwise. <laughs> the old man like, what's up? <laughs> Even if William Shamespeare is the liar you claim him to be, these facts have been objectively established. There's no escaping it. Ah. Therefore, in light of these facts, the prosecution calls for immediate adjudication. Y y you What? I when it zooms out like this, I feel like the back wall isn't close enough for him to slam into it like that. There's too much space there. Order! Well, counsel, how does the defendant did the defense respond? But Mr. Narahoro! What was the point of that last cross-examination? Did it actually get us anywhere? Or did it make no difference at all, like Lord Van Seeks is saying? I think I I don't know what uh, we're objecting to, but I feel like the obvious choice here is to actually object, so we're gonna we're gonna object. No, this isn't over. The defense will not rest. What? But counsel, you've successfully explained everything. You've identified and substantiated the abs an unscrupulous method employed by Mr. Shamespear to consume gas. What more is there to discuss? Lord Van Seeks just highlighted three facts in order to make his point. But contrary to what he would have the court believe, not all of them have been objectively established at all. Did he get poisoned by one of his own ice coins? Did someone put poison in, in his ice coin? Because that's what I was thinking before, like, I was like, oh, it's a red ice, red, red coin, and then it melted. I thought it was just tea, but maybe it's a coin. What are you trying to say, my Nipponese friend? <laughs> At least one of the, those so-called facts is an assumption made due to a lack of evidence. But the situation has changed now, following the cross-examination of the latest witnesses to take the stand. Don't be absurd. What is this nonsense? When you bring everything we've learned so far together and consider it as a whole, it's clear. There's a question that, that we now need to reconsider. Namely, was the poison in the tea? We've all been led to believe that the strychnine poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear was in the tea brought to him by Mr. Natsume, but that's conjecture at best. The victim has testified that nothing else passed his lips that night. There is no other possibility. 
and since there was no trace of the tea left at the scene, it couldn't be tested for traces of the poison. As I said, the situation has changed, because in fact, some of Mr. Natsume's tea was left at the scene. A particular piece of evidence proves it. A ludicrous claim. Scotland Yard's detectives investigated the scene exhaustively. The coin! So I, 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 I was right, I had the right evidence, but I was on the wrong track. I was like, maybe he got poisoned by a, by a, by an ice coin. But no, we're, we're trying to say, uh, there, there is a, a sample of the tea at, at the scene. It's, it's in the, the soap on the windowsill. What evidence are you suggesting they missed? The defense has made a bold claim indeed. Very well, counsel, present your proof. What evidence from the scene of the crime can tell us about the nature of this defendant's tea? It's the soap! Take that! Goodness gra- good gracious! The soap again? The same bar the victim used to fashion his coins of ice? Yes, that's right, my lord. It's just come back to me. Something about when we first found this bar of soap at the scene yesterday. Small bars of soap. So, what are bars of soap doing lined up on a ledge outside the window? I'm quite certain that when we originally stumbled upon the bars of soap, there was actually a frozen coin in each bar. So you discovered the gas thief's coin factory. Fascinating. In a way, yes, but there's more. The coins we found in the soap at the time weren't normal ice. There, there was something strange about them, you mean? Exactly. Something very obviously strange. They were red. The ice was red? No, you mean... That's right. It's obvious to me now. The fake coins in the soap were made from frozen tea! What? I would remind the court of a statement made by Mr. Natsume earlier in this trial. That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamespear's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I bought bottled water especially to make it. And this is the result! I'll never will, will I touch tea again! Never! Ah uh, yes, I believe there had been a there had been a snowfall that day. It was particularly cold. Sadly, on such occasions, the poorly constructed water mains on in the east end are prone to freezing. So on the night in question, Mr. Shamspear, having no running water to use, was forced to use the tea brought by Mr. Natsume in order to make his fake coins. My word. There were two bars of soap on the window ledge when my judicial assistant and I investigated the scene. That's right, and we only borrowed one of them. Which means that even as we speak, some of the defendant's tea is still present at the scene of the crime. Frozen solid in a bar of soap outside Mr. Shamspear's window. <laughs> Extraordinary. I'm getting into this, I hope I'm not peeking the mic. <laughs> Earlier today, Inspector Grad Gregson informed the court that if even one drop of the tea remained, Scotland Yard would be able to analyse it for poison. As such, we are now in a position to prove or disprove what has until now been mere conjecture. <laughs> You're good? Okay, cool. <laughs> By finding out for sure whether or not Mr. Natsume's tea actually contained strychnine at all. Ah, you smug Nipponese. My lord, we cannot do the defendant the injustice of passing judgment now. The police should be dispatched to discover the remaining bar of soap from the scene at once, and the defense requests a thorough analysis of the frozen tea embedded in it to determine whether or not it contains any poison. Let's go! Bailiff! Bailiff, instruct the police to attend the scene at once. 
Yes, my lord, understood. Hmm. It would seem that we have no choice but to suspend these proceedings for the time being. Oh, we're getting an intimation. We're, we're, we're gonna go investigate again, I guess. I trust you have no objection, Lord Van Zeeks. None, my lord. I guess the pacing of this game is more along the lines of a regular Ace Attorney game. The first one seemed very fast. Like, it, we, we had a trial-only case, an investigation-only case, and then a, uh... Another trial-only case. It wasn't until we got to the fourth case where it started to get more to, like, the, the regular pacing of an Ace Attorney game. So it seems with the second game they've sorted that out a bit better. None, my lord. Scotland Yard will recover the tea from the scene and carry out the, the requisite tests immediately. The trial will resume at the same hour tomorrow. The prosecution and defense may conduct further investigations as appropriate in the interim. Yes, my lord. Well... You know, it's, it is awfully convenient that the one new juror from the previous Soseki, Soseki Natsume trial, uh, just happened to be, you know, like, wife of the owner of the gas company. Well, we managed to scrape through there somehow. Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned until tomorrow. To be continued. Save the current progress. Yes, we will save here. Back to investigation. Twenty second of February. One eleven PM. Naruhodo's legal consultancy. Which is still running out of an attic. <laughs> Phew, he made it back in one piece. Just. To be perfectly honest though, I thought we were finished there for a while. Oh, I know. <laughs> what a lot of close shaves. There are so many carriages on the streets of London. You were nearly flattened several times. <laughs> I thought he was referring to the trial, but okay. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Yes, I know. It was a marvelous defense, Naruhodo-san. It really was. I was in awe of you. Oh, um, thank you. Now that your fervent exploits have won us some more precious investigation time. Let's see if we can find some new clues for court tomorrow. Yeah! <laughs> yes, let's do that. Is everything alright? I suppose I still can't quite believe it, that's all. I'm here in England, working as a lawyer, I mean. In the Old Bailey, no less. Right, because this is only his third trial, in terms of the timeline. The truth is, it shouldn't be me, should it? It should be him standing in my shoes. It should be Kazuma. Kazuma died during the first game. <laughs> for those for those who weren't aware. It was Kazuma Sama's wish that you follow him to Great Britain and work alongside him. Yes. I mean I never had the chance to ask him exactly why, but he clearly had a plan. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. And you're doing wonderfully, Naruhodo san. I've no doubt that Kazuma-sama would say the exact same if he were here with us. Thank you, Sasato-san. Thank you. Did we really need a fade-out for that? 
This is just, yeah. Oh. I, I guess we can go through all these then. It was quite a shock earlier, wasn't it? I was expecting it to just be the regular, oh yeah, what's next? Like, do you have any ideas that the co-councils often get? It was quite a shock earlier today, wasn't it? When the victim himself turned up in court and took the stand. I know. Not only that, but then finding out that he is actually a barefaced gas thief as well. Yes, that was certainly a surprise to us all. For a while, it seemed as though everyone had quite forgotten about Sasaki-san poisoning the tea. <laughs> Careful of your phrasing, Sasato-san, he didn't poison anything. And there's more to this Mr. Shamspear that we yet know. I'm sure of it. Mr. Shamspear certainly wasn't the noble, upstanding man everyone thought he was at first. What's become of him, actually? I was told that he'd be returning to the hospital ward where he was receiving treatment. Oh, which one is that? Let me see. Ah yes, he's at St. Bartholomew's, or Bart's as the Londoners call it. We know that place, don't we? Yes, we visited Miss Green there yesterday. It's the same hospital to which she was taken. Ah yes, after Soseki-san stabbed her in the back. Do be careful of your phrasing, Narihara-san. He didn't stab anyone. <laughs> Perhaps we both owe Sasaki-san an apology. St. Bartholomew's. Yes, we should probably visit the hospital later. What's next? So, we know that Sasaki-san took the tea to the victim on the night in question. But as he isn't the culprit, then obviously... Yes, the poison surely wasn't in the tea. Oh, right. Here I was going like, oh, it's a gas leak. It's a gas leak. He just passed out because of a gas leak. There is... <laughs> there is literally a named poison that was given to him. <laughs> he, It's not just a gas leak. I'm heckin' stupid. <laughs> but they mentioned the gas so much that I thought, oh, it's got to be relevant. And it is. Just not in the way I thought it would be. <laughs> Surely the poison, yeah, the, the poison surely wasn't in the tea. But if that's the case, how on earth did the poison get to Mr. Shamespear's body? I'm sure we'll find a clue at the scene. There must be something in Mr. Shamespear's room that will help solve the mystery. Well, naturally, Scotland Yard detectives have been over the place already, but it couldn't hurt for us to have another look around, I think. Definitely. And I'm desperate to know the outcome of the investigation into the tea left in the bar of soap. Well, if we run into Inspector Gregson, we could ask him about that. Gregson, I, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, because it's been a while since I streamed Ace Attorney. But uh, Gregson is another victim of the whole, uh, instead of giving the characters puns, just name them after Sherlock Holmes characters. So, yeah, there's there's no there's no pun in his name. He's literally just named after a Sherlock Holmes character. <laughs> what about Kazuma's wishes? Kazuma Asagi. The best friend I ever had, and a lawyer with such promise. He really saved my bacon in that horrible incident just before we left Japan. I can still picture him now. Looking so fierce and determined in court. And then after the trial, that crazy idea he came up with. As a stowaway? Yes, you can fit inside my trunk if you curl up small enough, I'm sure. No one will know. Kazuma, won't you tell me why? Why go to these lengths so that I can accompany you to Great Britain? Well, it's been on my mind ever since we got through that trial. That you really ought to go into law. Be a, de be a defense lawyer. You've got a natural talent for it. Believe me. I guarantee it. But I've never even thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, I can't force you, obviously. You'll have to decide for yourself. But anyway, London is the cultural capital of the world. A city at the forefront of everything. It can't hurt you to s for you to see it with your own eyes. No, that's true. 
I suppose, though, if you were to become a lawyer, then one day... One day what? No, oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> Sus. <laughs> Naruhoda-san? Oh, sorry, I was just thinking about Kazuma. Yes, he's forever in my thoughts, too. To change the Japanese judicial system for the better. That was his dream. And that's why he so desperately wanted to come to Great Britain to study, of course. Yes, that's right, but... Yes? I do wonder if his true intentions lay elsewhere sometimes. I don't know. The thought just takes hold of me every now and then. That's all. Okay, so we did have to go through all this. Never mind. <laughs> Naruhoda-san, what do you mean by Kazuma-sama's true intentions? <laughs> just heckin' pans up from the bottom of the screen. Sword. <laughs> I mean this. His katana? I never expected to inherit this sword after Kazuma-sama. Uh, Kazuma passed away, of course. No, I know. It was because I asked you to take it. When I have it at my side in court, I feel as though it gives me courage. Yes. Actually, the night before he died, he told me a little about the sword. Karuma? That's right. It's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations in the Asagi clan. Hold on. I need to quickly look up something. Uh... One second. I need to check. It's probably unrelated, but Karuma is the Japanese name, the, ja the Japanese surname of Manfred and Francisca von Karma. <laughs> I, I don't think it's related, but if it is, that's an interesting thing to name the sword after. <laughs> Especially... Especially because in all, even in the Japanese version, the Von Karmas aren't from Japan. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> like, in the English version, since the English version is set in America, uh, they made it so that uh, they're from Germany. But in the Japanese version, they're from America. <laughs> So, the fact that the sword shares its name with the Von Karmas is kind of, uh, interesting. I wonder if it has the same name in the Japanese version. <laughs> I'm not gonna look that up, because that could give me spoilers. But, you know, speculation. <laughs> it's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asagi clan. A Japanese man's sword is his soul, Ryanosuke. I can't be parted from my katana. Karuma guides me. I truly believe that. So its name compels its wielder to slice evil in two? Not that you would need much compelling. <laughs> On that subject... There's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. Something you have to do? Yes. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Of, of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll see it through to the end with you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. What did he mean by something very important that I have to do? I hoped that the answer to that question would become apparent when we arrived here, but as yet, I have not found a single clue. I see. 
All right. Time to get moving. Shall we go say hello to Mr. Shums and Iris? She has different things to say about every one of these. That's interesting. I've never really paid attention to that. Uh, let's go to Bart's. It says Miss Green's hospital room, but I don't know if, if like... I didn't see a separate room there, but uh... What do you suppose is happening? It sounds like some sort of disturbance. Yes, I hear angry voices. Oh. Be not angry, O oh ample lady. Verily, thou art mistaken. Mistaken, my foot? You were looking. You were looking at my painting. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Twas foul indeed, the poison that moustached villain gaveth me. Forgive me, lady. I wish that you'd died from that poison. God a mercy, ample lady, but thou seest I have vigor still. Behold, my sham spear dance. <laughs> What the fuck is this animation? <laughs> Next Fortnite emote right here, the sham spear dance. <laughs> this looks rather ominous, doesn't it? <laughs> he noticed us. Ah, lo, tis the lawyer from the land Whence riseth, riseth the sun? How now? Um, what are you doing here, Mr. Shamspear? Mary, I do believe I am returned to unto another ward. He was looking, that's what he was doing. Looking at my terrible work. Oh no, you gotta have some confidence. <laughs> gotta have some confidence in your art. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> As they say. Eastern fellow, so dark, it clad. Faith, thy work in court this morning was wonderful. I do applaud thee. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but, he bent his staff, his cane, his whatever. That doesn't mean things will go so wonderfully for you tomorrow, does it? He just dropped his fancy speech. Straightened it out. Anon exunt. Mr. Shamsphere might technically be the victim in this case. But there's definitely a lot more to it than that. It's very hard to pin the man down. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm such an awful person. Uh, Miss Green, is everything alright? Oh, yes, I mean, don't worry about me. They're about to discharge me, so I must get ready to leave now. Oh, I see. We're delighted that you'll soon be well enough to go home, Miss Green. Oh dear, you're too kind. I, I don't deserve it. I am immediately going to look at the painting. <laughs> That's, that's how it is. You use the buttons. What do you mean nothing in particular? No, there is a there is a painting on the floor. Okay, I guess that gives us nothing then. Oh, we have a new thing here. Uh, this looks like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... He or she is probably running around the hospital then. Oh dear, how worrying. <laughs> What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. <laughs> Looks like that's everything, I guess. Oh, aside from Miss Green herself, of course. 
So, are you feeling more like yourself today, Miss Green? I am, thank you. I mean, people do recover from ordeal ordeals like this, don't they? Even people like me? Well, yes. It really was an ordeal, wasn't it? As far as I was concerned, I was just walking along the snow one evening, minding my own business. And then completely out of the blue, I was struck in the back by a knife and collapsed unconscious for days. Of course, when I finally woke up again yesterday, the whole business had been cleared up already. What a terrible week it's been for you. Oh no, I'm sure I'm very lucky, really. I'll look back on this fondly. Really? <laughs> anyway, I must be getting my things together now, so I'm ready to be, ready to be discharged. Oh yes, of course. Sorry to take up your time when you're obviously busy. I guess... I guess we just had to come here to see Shamspear be a... Oh, oh yeah. We just had to come here and see Shamspear be an asshole. And then <laughs> leave. Alright. Off to Mr. Shamspear's room then. Mr. Natsume's lodging's ground floor? You mean Mr. Shamspear's room? Oh hey, it's Gregson. With his fish and chips again. His never-ending, never-ending thing of fish and chips. Oh, hello again, Inspector Gregson. What are you doing here? Um, well, we were hoping to have another look around, actually. <laughs> Think of all the cubs and Kelvin. But fish and chips, though. It's so good. The lawyer representing the defendant has a right to examine the scene, as I'm sure you're aware. Yeah, I know the score. Oh, yes, one other thing. The soap on the ledge outside the window. Did you find it? With the tea in it? Yeah, we found it alright. And there was a small amount of tea in it, as you said. I knew it. It's with the identify and identification section at the yard now. They're looking into it. The results should be available later today. That's wonderful news. Thank you. Pretty impressive performance in court this morning. Sorry? <laughs> Nothing. Forget it. Just make sure you don't disturb anything in here. Oh, they pieced the... They pieced the soap back together. So it turns out that Mr. Shamspear wasn't eating the soap at all. <laughs> That's right, the mystery of why he had it on a plate whilst holding a fork in his hand is discovered. Yes, to prise his latest ice coin out of its mold. And in the process, he accidentally broke the bar of soap in two. It certainly was hard to imagine, let alone deduce. Ah, the ill-fated teacups from which the two men drank on the ill-fated night. During their heated literary debate, yes. Who's stronger, Romeo or Juliet? Sounds like it was quite the discussion. <laughs> now I think of it, I'm sure that, that the two lovers in the play ended their lives with poison. That's fiction, Miss Susato. Let's hope it stays that way. Oh, that, that's that's the scrap of the envelope. I was like, what what's this here shining? Shining over here. The sun never shines in this room, thanks to that depressing bricked up window. Yet with enough determination, you can always remove bricks to set to set some soap outside, can't you? That sounds like a very wise life lesson, Miss Susato. <laughs> Only if you plan to follow a life of crime, Mr. Narihora. If you ran out of change, you wouldn't even have any light, let alone heat. For the needy, London's winters can be very harsh. That's true. But if you think about it, 
Even the wealthy could find themselves freezing if they ran out of small change. <laughs> Too true, if I run out of, like, I'm not exactly hurting for money, but if I run out of the right, right coins, I can't do my laundry. <laughs> Cause our frickin' washing machine is, is coin operated. <laughs> it's probably my least favorite part of living here. I gotta get the right coins all the, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> London's winters can be very harsh for the forgetful too then. <laughs> Frankly, I'm starting to wonder if Susato-san and I are going to make it to spring. <laughs> That's true, we don't even have a meter at Baker Street, let alone a gas stove. <laughs> Look how dark the stain on the floor is underneath the meter there. Yes, from all the water dripping out after the ice coins melted as you established in court this morning. It's very large, it's a very large and obvious stain, isn't it? Mr. Shamsmere must have used an awful lot of ice coins, I suppose. It was an ingenious idea, I'll give him that. Anything else of import? My man's got gas lights and he's using a candle. Are you looking for new clues, Inspector? On Lord Van Zeek's orders, yeah. Don't come back till you've got something for me, he says. Oh dear, poor you. <laughs> yeah, poor me, because we've already searched every bleeding nook and cranny in this place. Don't know what he expects, to be honest. Thank goodness for warm chips, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, at least he's honest. <laughs> so were we just supposed to come here to... to get the news about the tea? Because I don't see anything else we can interact with. I figured they were gonna have something to say about the fact that the soap's been put back together, but apparently not. Evidently, that is all that is here. Right. Uh, we can go visit Soseki. Soseki-san. <laughs> He's doing it again! No talk me, I angry. <laughs> oh, Mr. Natsume is back. So he is. Mr. Natsume, hello. Hey, I am a cat. Sorry. I don't know who Mr. Natsume is. Or Herlock Sholmes. I don't know about courts or trials or old baileys. I am a cat. That's what I am. Just a cat. <laughs> Mr. Naruhodo is trying to escape from reality. <laughs> trying to? He already has, completely. So, um, what is your name then? As yet, I have no name. <laughs> Mr. Naruhodo, he hasn't fully thought out his new identity yet. Maybe it's not too late to bring him back to reality. <laughs> Do you think you could open your eyes for us, Mr. Natsume? <laughs> I am not a cat. <laughs> It worked, he's back in the real world. What's going to b become of me? No, don't answer that, it's obvious. My accursed soul is never going to escape this accursed fate. Mr. Natsume, no, this morning's proceedings in court prove that there's hope. Yes, yes, locum student Naruhodo, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, was brilliant, but, but, the Reaper is omnipresent, in court, in my lodgings, here, there, everywhere. Why is he looking straight at me for? I think perhaps there are some things we should discuss. Oh, yes, yes we must. <laughs> I 
in my whole life. Ha have I ever been so, so moved as I was today? No! Of course, if I cast my mind back, there were perhaps one or two other occasions that moved me more. But if I just block those out, then today, being in that courtroom was, was... It was the most moving experience of my life, locum student Mr. Narohono Esquire. You're too kind. Scotland Yard found the remaining tea just as we deduced and are analyzing it as we speak. Oh, uh, so if we came in here before we went to go see Gregson, then I guess uh, Mr. Natsume wouldn't be in his cell. So I guess it's a good thing we went and did that first. There's nothing wrong with that tea. They won't find a drop of poison in it. That's a uh, solemn sworn Soseki son tea. Tell me, did you both drink the tea at the same time that night? Oh yes, most definitely. Remember, drink tea while it's hot. We both poured it down our throats like it was a hot bath for our bellies. Now hold on, that doesn't make sense. Because Soseki, Soseki's teacup didn't uh, didn't have a, the tea ring in it, meaning that presumably... Thank you, Theo. <laughs> Presumably he drank it fast. But Shamespear's teacup did have a tea ring, meaning that he left it for a while and the tea stained the cup. Now that's curious. And at the time you were both completely fine, as shown by the fact that he and Mr. Shamespear then <laughs> engaged in the Romeo and Juliet match. I suppose the focus of tomorrow's proceedings will be how the poison was taken by the victim, then. So I'm going to continue on this conversation, but then I'm going to present the teacups to see what he has to say there. That rotten sham spear. What have I ever done to him? You don't recall him taking issue with you over anything you've done recently? I've been holed up in my room, immersed in books. I don't recall anything. Anything at all. Right. What I don't understand is why he didn't let me know sooner. Let you know what, Mr. Natsume? About the soap, of course. What else? Oh dear. Are you struggling with such a mega stipend? Or stipend? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Of course I am, if I had money. I wouldn't have chosen to live in a curse and existence in such a curse and lodgings. Oh yes, you said it's because the place is cursed that it's so cheap, didn't you? Exactly! Especially the room that I rent. The spirit of that capital offender who lived there still haunts the place and it's trying to kill me! Capital offender? Might I ask, locum student, Mr. Narahoda Esquire, that the next time you visit me, you'll bring scores of super soft soaps. Oh, we're not gonna get- we're not gonna get information on that capital offender, are we? Interesting. No, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to present it. Um, Mr. Natsume. It's nothing much, but... Oh, it's been too long since I've- oh. He has nothing to say about that. Okay. I guess the T-rings are going to come into play later. I've been offered a present with that delightful, humble etiquette of our homeland. What? You're too kind, I accept it gladly. <laughs> Sorry, but I wasn't trying to give it to you, actually. Let's just present him some stuff to see if we can get any- okay, nope. Hammer through the text. Nearby street map, book receipt. Submitted as evidence in the trial the other day. Teacups, crime scene photograph. Medical report. So yeah, he, it's not a gas leak, he explicitly consumes strychnine. Toxic effects present 30 minutes after ingestion, high likelihood of the substance having been mixed with the tea. Poisoning occurred then. Okay. 
I don't think there's anything worth presenting to him. So I guess we go somewhere else now. Let's go say hello to Shomes and Iris. Oh, Runo and Susie! Hooray, you're back! Hello, Iris. You're in fine spirits as always, I see. I am, and you look as immaculately presented as ever, Susie. Oh, you flatter me. But you couldn't have come at a better time. I've just made a pot of tea. I'll set some cups. Really? Thanks, Iris. But actually... What is that foul smell? <laughs> Aha! The wonder has returned at last. Where on earth have, you pair, have the pair of you been? Um, we've been in court? <laughs> oh, for Mr. Mustache's case. That was, that was today, wasn't it? I'm sure I mentioned it only yesterday, Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure you think you did. <laughs> well, we can laugh about it now. So tell me, how did the trial go? Reasonably well so far. We've managed to escape without a guilty verdict at least. Really? I would have liked to see it. And I must pass the time... Uh, the time of day with Mr. Reaper again. It's been too long. Is Lord Van Six an acquaintance, Mr. Sholmes? Naturally. There's not a person in the world who doesn't know my name, Mr. Naruhodo. Not quite what I asked, but still. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes, whatever is that odor? Yes, oh yes. <laughs> yes, what is it? It's faint, but it's absolutely awful. Ah, indeed, that's the scent of victory, my dear fellows. Victory in science. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, I'll buy it. What's he up to now? We'll talk about Lord Van Zeeks first, I guess. Lord Barok Van Zeeks. Yes, it's an interesting so sobriquet he has, isn't it? The Reaper of the Bailey. Uh, sobriquet is, uh, like a, um, like a title, or a nickname, I guess. It's what people call you. I only know that word because of fucking epic rap battles of history. <laughs> they used it, uh, in heckin', uh, Richard the Lionheart versus, uh, Ragnar Lodbrok. The lion, uh, lion hearts the sobriquet, but I strike like a cobra. <laughs> so I didn't know what sobriquet meant, and I looked up the rap meanings, and they're like, "Yeah, this this means like it's a it's a title or a, you know, it's what people call him." <laughs> Once the legendary prosecutor has fought for someone's conviction, that person is doomed. Even if he or she is found not guilty by the courts, sooner or later the hapless soul will vanish from the capital. But vanish how, exactly? By falling under a passing carriage, or drowning in the Thames, or succumbing to a sudden fever, or quite out of the blue being set upon by a highwayman. There are numerous routes to one's final terminus, my dear fellow. It all seems a little far-fetched, really. Well, on the bright side, Mr. Mustache is fighting fit, for the time being at least. That's not overly reassuring. <laughs> if the rumors are true though, the obvious conclusion would surely be that those acquitted are, well, by Lord Zeke's van, Lord van Zeke's own hand. Hold on a second. <laughs> Because of the angle he's being displayed at, we can see that he doesn't actually put the pipe in his mouth in this, in this animation. Normally he's like front on and you can see that it lines up properly, but when, when he's at an angle like this, you can see he's not actually... He's just sort of holding it near his mouth. Okay. As it happens, Miss Susato, that's quite impossible. Oh, why? 
Naturally, the man is the man very quickly came under such suspicion. However, whenever these incidents occurred, the Reaper always had a cast iron alibi. Really? And so his reign continued. But five years ago, he vanished from the courts, never to appear as a prosecutor again. That is, until you arrived in the country, Mr. Naruhodo. Um, I like half said it the way Sholmes should say it, and half said it the proper way. <laughs> yes, so I've heard. In fact, it was the very day I arrived when I was thrust in, into a trial at the Old Bailey. That bitter fight to the death coincided with the Reaper's resurrection. And really did end bitterly indeed. For those unaware, the uh, the culprit was in fact guilty, but we got them acquitted, uh, and then they uh, checked out the the carriage where the where the murder occurred, and he was burned alive inside of it. So you know. And here you are facing Mr. Reaper again. Poor Runo. I don't know if you're just incredibly unlucky or incredibly unlikable. <laughs> I, I think it goes deeper than just me. I sense a general loathing of all Japanese people. I guess we'll continue on with this line of logic then. With Mr. Natsume, who I'm currently defending being Japanese as well, no, being Japanese, as well as Mr. Sato and myself. I feel it even more keenly in court today. For some reason, Lord Van Zeek seems to have an inherent disdain of the Japanese. Which is why he calls them Nipponese, a made-up slur that can be put into the game without offending actual Japanese people. <laughs> Indeed, it is an interesting observation. Do you know something about it? Do you, Mr. Sholmes? <laughs> It was about ten years ago that Barack Van Zeeks chose to enter the legal profession. However, before that time, the young man's closest companion hailed from the Empire of Japan. No! What the? Tell us more, Mr. Sholmes. What happened? I believe I've made it clear before. I'm unable to tell you anything about the the affair. Oh, but... Well then. <laughs> the veil will be lifted on the events of the past in due course, I have no doubt. For now, however, it is Mr. Mustache who is most deserving of your attention, I believe. That is a very good point. <laughs> So, what is that indescribably foul smell? Ah, well. Most probably this, I would say. What is that? My dear fellow, it is, of course, my latest invention. A chemical test that can identify whether or not a tea is, a, is genuine at the drop of some... At the <laughs> a chemical test that can identify whether or not a tea is genuine at the drop of some tea. <laughs> oh my. What do you mean genuine? There are some unscrupulous sorts manning the stalls along some of London's less frequented streets. They regular se regularly sell what purports to be high quality tea, but is in fact merely dra uh, dyed leaves of drab flavour. Well, that's certainly unsavoury behaviour. So when one is presented with what appears to be black tea, one must be careful. Iris? At the ready, Hurley. Let us add a drop of my chemical to this cup of tea here. Do you see what happens? It turned completely black. And what a foul odour it's giving off. Indeed, the blacker the tea becomes and the more foul the odour, the better the tea is. It would appear that this cup was particularly fine. 
was a particularly fine Darjeeling. I don't know what that is. I assume it's a kind of tea? I don't know. I just drink regular fucking English breakfast tea. <laughs> That's very ingenious. What do you do with that black liquid now? Well, I dispose of it naturally. Surely you wouldn't like to drink it, would you? <laughs> there does seem to be a rather obvious problem with your new invention, Mr. Sholmes. Hence why this chemical test is merely a test, my dear madame. Right. <laughs> The point is, we are entering in a new era of science in the world of criminal, criminal investigation also. Yes, forensic science. Oh, these are such exciting times. I regularly engage in this scientific experimentation alongside my unofficial consulting detective work. The Herlock Sholmes method will be the foundation upon which modern investigative investigative technique is based. This little tea indicant was a happy byproduct of my ongoing forensic science research. Forensic science. I suppose I should find out more about that. Are we gonna meet Emma's ancestor or something? Probably not. So your tea test. <laughs> is that an example of forensic science? Indeed it is. An essential tool in cases that hinge on the knowledge of whether some tea is of high, qu high or inferior quality. Not a huge number of cases, then. Perhaps a more practical example is required. Fingerprints? Not yet accepted in our court as evidence, I might add. Really, we are dragging our heels here. I hadn't even heard of them until recently. Which is partly why I undertake research in this field myself, of course. Does that mean you're studying fingerprints, Mr. Sholmes? There are others in, the, in that field already, and I abhor the company of inferior minds. No, what I am researching is skin prints. Skin prints? A nomenclature of my own design, as is this chemi chemical agent that makes it possible. It instantly reveals objects touched by whichever person is under investigation. How? Brilliant, Mr. Sholmes, as long as it doesn't turn everything completely odorous and black. How the fuck would that work? Is it like a heckin' DNA test or something? But, like, if it works, then... Then, like, fingerprints are completely useless. You wouldn't need them at all. And I'm guessing it doesn't work because it doesn't exist in modern-day Ace Attorney. I assure you, my dear fellows, you will witness my forensic talents in action very soon indeed. Well, I think we should go back to the scene and see if we can uncover any new clues. That's the spirit, Runal. See you later. Yes, until later. No, no, Mr. Sholmes, we were thinking uh, you'd come with us. You were? <laughs> yes, of course. You just said so just a moment ago. You said we'd witness your forensic talents in action. <laughs> ah, yes, I do recall saying something along those lines. <laughs> but you go on ahead. I shall be sure to follow you later. In all likelihood. Probably. Maybe. Well, I might. <laughs> Your commitment astounds me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Shones. We'll eagerly await your arrival. Bye-bye, Runa. Bye, Susie. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Shones. So I guess we just go back and now Mr. Shones will be here. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hello, sir. Mr. Sholmes, what are you up to over there? What a question indeed. Was it not your good self who asked me to attend the scene? Oi, what are you doing here, Sholmes? What are you up, up to over there? What are you doing here? Dear me, once a great detective, one is, all, 
One is always under scrutiny, it seems. Is now the time, Mr. Sholmes? Are you about to show us your forensic talents in action as you promised? With the greatest of pleasure, my dear madame. Um, what's all this? Ayo? All this is precisely what you requested, Mr. Naruhodo. I don't think... I don't think they had that sort of technology in whatever era of London we are currently in. Herlock Sholmes' sensational skin print seeker gun. Moments ago, I took a sample from the teacup that was used by the victim. A sample? From Mr. Shamespear's cup? Each individual leaves microscopic secretions on everything he or she touches. A sample of those secretions is all I need to produce this. A refined indicator solution. By spraying the room with this chemical, everything the victim touched is instantly revealed with the aid of these goggles. Here, try them on. There, now spray the chemical indicator about, and all will be revealed. Spray? How do I do that exactly? A little press of A on the area you're, you're interested in is all that's required. Like this. Uh, sure is convenient how this gun has an A button. <laughs> ah, what is that stuff? It's like a fog. A suspension of the chemical indicator in a pressurized gas. It's the most effective way to cover a large area. That was another invention I discovered. I discovered, incidentally, whilst I was developing this idea. As you do. Go ahead, try it, my dear fellow. We may learn something interesting about the victim's movements on the night in question. Well, there's nothing to lose, I suppose. Let's explore. Okay, so we don't need to do it to make it brighter. Like we do with the luminol in, in uh, other games. So I guess everything else has cleaned up remarkably well, and that's why there's relatively few prints on it. Oh. A lot of prints over there. Oh? Now that's interesting. What's in the box? Oh. Look, there are dozens of handprints over here. So there are. A great many indeed. So much so that it's hard to make out one individual print, in fact. Ugh, it sends a chill down my spine. Perhaps he was leaning against the wall while he admired this picture? Unlikely, I would say. It's a rather, it's a rather dull scene, after all. And without wishing to state the obvious, you wouldn't generally admire a picture from such close borders, I feel. Oh, very true, Miss Sato. It's a bit of a mystery, then. I mean, you could... Check behind the picture. Spray the clothes. What about the stage? Is that everything? Oh. The letter. Oh. Look at all this here. Something beneath the floorboards. So there's something behind the painting and something beneath the floorboards, is my guess. Ah yes, interesting. A multitude of the victim's hand... Oh, that's... that's Sholmes. A multitude of the victim's handprints. Why are there so many on the floor in this one spot? Oh, perhaps they had a bad fall just here? There's nothing obvious that he would have tripped over though, is there? Hmm, I wonder. Personally, I often stumble when there's nothing obvious to trip over. I think that's something only a great detective would do, Mr. Sholmes. Well, this is quite a puzzle. Handprints all over the floor. Yes, there's no obvious explanation. Aside from, you know, the fact that he was perhaps lifting up the floorboards. Look, that floorboard looks so heckin' loose. Well, we sprayed Mr. Sholmes' amazing skin print indicator all over this room, didn't we? We did, but there are two places in particular that are of interest, I would say. I will say, 
If this is technology that just exists in the Ace Attorney world, I would question why it isn't being used in the modern day. <laughs> Cause like this is significant, like maybe it's just unreliable or something. Like it doesn't make much sense to me <laughs> that they just ditched this technology. <laughs> The handprint's on the floor there. <laughs> Maybe it's lost tech in the future. And, and on the wall by the picture, you mean? I mean, maybe, I guess. Yes, and I think the floor warrants closer investigation. I won't be a moment. <laughs> ah! What is it, Miss Susato? Look here, Mr. Naruhodo. One of the floorboards has popped out, and just as I thought. One of the, you mean, it's a secret hiding place? Excellent work, Miss Susato. And what do we have in here? Oi, what are you lot doing? Inspector Gregson, stand aside, stand aside right this minute. It's my job to investigate here. <laughs> as I angrily chomp down this fish. <laughs> No need, Inspector. You continue to dig into your portion of chips while we dig around under the floor here. <laughs> you f your fancy talk's putting me off my food anyways, Sholmes. A new bit of evidence is exactly what I need. Wow, a secret hiding place under the floor. What a find. It's not a hiding place you could make use of in Japan. And I don't think I could fit a straw... I don't think I could fit a straw to Tom. Oh. It's not a hiding place you could make use of in Japan. I don't think I could fit a straw to Tommy, man. <laughs> no, I know. But I never expected one of these hood wooden floorboards to move either. It's got me wondering about the wall over there, too. Aren't you curious? Oh! I shall investigate at once. There's nothing behind the picture, sadly. Only the wall. Oh. Interesting. I wonder what was up then. Hmm. How disappointing. But then, how do you explain the handprints? I really can't think of why anyone would have been touching the wall over and over in one place like that. Ah! There you are, a print for you. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Sholmes. Oh, thank you very much. His invention can make prints too? Now then. Wonder if Inspector Gregson has found anything under the floor there. I'm desperate to know! So am I! Let's ask him then, shall we? I'd love to know if there's anything hidden underneath the floorboard there. Allow me to ask Gregson now. After all, we're well acquainted. <laughs> Just have to plop him in the scene first. Inspector Gregson, it's really been too long. What is it, Sholmes? <laughs> I thought perhaps you might show me what you found there, seeing as we're such good friends. We're not friends. No, I suppose not. <laughs> A dismal failure! <laughs> yes, I heard. Kill to know what was underneath that floorboard. Alright then, fair's fair. What? You did discover the hiding place after all. I suppose I should at least fill you in. Really, Inspector? Thank you. Do it quickly, my dear fellow. If there's one thing I know about this man, it's that he blows with the wind, as fickle as the weather. As, as fickle as the weather. Oi, stop making me out to be some kind of nut. There were three items under, under the floor. Or there. A newspaper clip, clipping, a photographic print, 
and a tin box. Now, what do you want to know? Start with the newspaper clipping. Looks like this was cut out of the paper about three months ago. It's about a convict who got sick and died while he was serving time up in Manchester. How terrible. Made the headlines down here in London as well. The bloke had been sentenced to death, you see, but nature got him first. Oh my goodness, he committed a capital offence? Oh, is this the capital offender that, uh... Heckin... Saseki was talking about? <laughs> Man by the name of Selden. Nasty piece of work. In a burglaries and... In a burglaries and murder. They say the hoard he'd knocked off was worth about a thousand pounds. A hoard? Of treasure, you mean? Jewelry and the like. But he had hidden it somewhere, no one knows where. Now he's dead. The papers loved it, of course. A thousand pounds lost on en on route to hell. Or some such was the headline. Does it not strike you, though? Why such an article would be so carefully ensconced under the floor? I suppose now you mention it, it does seem a bit odd. Perhaps I'll go over the paperwork we've got on Selden back of the yard and see if I can turn anything up. Alright, what about the photo? So this is the photograph I found. Looks reasonably recent to me. Yes, yeah, so it would have would appear to have been ta taken on the street in front of in front of the house here. The guy looks. Hmm. The gentleman on the left. The gentleman on the left is Mr. Garadab, the landlord, of course. But who's the young man on the right? Mr. Garadab's son, perhaps? I'm guessing it's Shamspear, but like, younger. You can take that print if you like. Really? Are you sure? We can presume, therefore, that the Yard already knows. The identity of the young fellow, that is. Ah, is that true? Hmm. Well, it's too bad if we do. Unfortunately for you lot, leaking information isn't one of my pastimes. It's much better than Gumshoe then, in that case. I miss Gumshoe. When are they going to bring Gumshoe back in the main series? Like, Emma's great and all. I do really like Emma. But where is Gumshoe? <laughs> They've hinted that he's definitely still on the force and he's still working for Edgeworth, but like, we haven't seen him. They haven't even name dropped him, they've just hinted to his existence. My dear inspector, if I may be so bold as to point something out. Pastimes are for one's leisure, but this is for work. All the more reason, I'm not telling you. <laughs> A dismal failure. <laughs> yes, I heard. I wonder why a photograph like this was hidden under the floor. I mean, Mr. Shamspear Spear himself isn't in it, supposedly. Photographic prints are still rare treasures in, in the East End. I imagine Mr. Garadab was rather delighted to have been immortalized. He probably made a proud present of it. So you say. Now this tin box looks interesting, doesn't it? Might I suggest, Inspector, that you open it? If you were to find something inside that reveals the truth behind this case, I wouldn't be in the least surprised. <laughs> yeah, funnily enough, I already had a look. It's completely empty. What? Sham Spear, give us a clue, man! You didn't even have a chance to utter a word, Mr. Narihoro. <laughs> but anyway, at least we found out what's inside the box. Yes, thin air. It's empty. Rather like how I feel inside. Oh no. Oh, poor Mr. Narihoro. 
<laughs> that hit harder than it should have. What? Ah. Oh. Is there nothing more to this box then? I wonder. Cat. Kitty! Uh, thank you for the redeems for you. I love how you put the Miko emote alongside Cat. <laughs> oh look, it's that lovely little cat. What was its name? It's Mr. Natsume's innocent, isn't it? I don't think we ever asked him, actually. <laughs> Oh no, we're dropping frames! Bruh! Bruh! Is it going back up, I think? Maybe? Oh! I think we're okay. Nope, it's gone again. Oh, it's back up. Okay. Nope, it's going again. Okay. Well, well, I think we're gonna finish this scene and then we'll just end the stream. Because, like, we're, we're close enough to where I would normally end anyway. It's a slightly shorter stream, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> or if it stays up, I guess we can keep going. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not, I'm not gonna, like, restart my router or OBS again or whatever. We'll just deal with it. <laughs> Why don't we call him, um, Lagahai? We know Mr. Natsume refers to himself, you know, like, Mr. Natsume refers to himself in Japanese. That's... That's interesting. <laughs> because, like, I'm pretty sure we haven't seen him do that because he speaks English in the translated version, you know? So I, I assume in the Japanese version, you saw, you'd see him actually saying Wagahai. But like, because it's, because it's the English version, he speaks English instead. I only know what Wagahai means because of fucking Hollow Life. Because fucking, it's what, what's her name? Laplace Darkness refers to herself with. I know all these words, but I know them from completely stupid places. <laughs> anyway, Wagahai. I think it's like a an archaic uh, first person like way of referring to yourself. Similar to Watashi or Boku. Wonder how he got in here, clever cat. Oh, wonderful, then. Wagahai, here's something delicious I brought to you from the cat's meat man. <laughs> Why do they spell meow like that? Oh, there goes my internet again. <laughs> we haven't actually disconnected, we're just dropping a lot of frames. And then he went to sleep. <laughs> he couldn't be happier now, look. I just hope we can bring some happiness to his owner, too. Oh, he woke up. Cute. Mm. Yeah, we're like ten minutes out from where I'd normally end. I think we're just gonna save and end the stream for today. I don't want to... Cause like, we're, we're dropping frames as it is. Like, uh, uh, right now it looks good, but like, it, it's going up and down and up and down. It's like, ten minutes, we're not gonna miss out on much. <laughs> Blah! <laughs> Alright, let's go back. To the chat scene. 
All right. Thank you for watching. I enjoyed coming back to Ace Attorney. I was thinking like, oh, I want to play another code, so I guess I should do like one of the non-mystery games that I'm playing through on Saturday. Uh, and then I decided, you know what? No, fuck it. I want to play Ace Attorney. So I played Ace Attorney. <laughs> so tomorrow we're probably doing more another code. I don't know if like, I was thinking like, oh, I'll just like, I'll end here and then we can split it up so that like in the next stream we go through the rest of the first game. Don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to do a super long stream again for it. <laughs> But, uh, we shall see. We shall see. But in all likelihood, tomorrow will be another code. Because I want to get back to it again. I want to see... I want to see what's different, because, like... Things are definitely different. Uh... Hold on. I completely forgot what I needed to... Oh no, quick, quick, quick. Mute. <laughs> I ha... I muted the wrong thing. Ah, no, you're hearing double. I had desktop audio enabled the entire stream, but that's fine, because <laughs> it didn't matter, because nothing was playing on my desktop, so you, there, there shouldn't have been anything aside from, like, maybe a Windows notification for, like, oh, stream disconnected or whatever. Uh, I raided Miko last weekend. So we'll raid Bun today. Da, 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 da. So we're gone. <laughs> Getting ads for my fucking the store I use for my groceries. <laughs> we're gonna raid Bun. Bun is currently playing. Uh, the backroom survival with mystery, renewed, whatever you want to call them. Here are the raid messages. Da da da. And I don't have to draw a comic strip today because I already did this week's one. Let's go. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I guess I'm just gonna. M mess around with RPG Maker even more. <laughs> ah, thanks for watching. Otsukame. Bye bye. Yansane.